Welcome back, Canisius High School. It's Andy DL with another episode of Conversations with Canisius. I have a very special guest today. I am joined all the way from Annapolis, Maryland in the U.S. Naval Academy by Tom Flaherty, who is a member of the class of 1996. Uh, Tom is currently a battalion officer at the United States Naval Academy, and he's a former nuclear sub uh, commander, or nuclear, I guess you'd say your current nuclear sub officer, and formerly a captain of a fast attack sub, among other subs, right? Tom, how are you today? I'm doing awesome, Andy. Thanks for having me today. It's great to, it's great to uh, see you again, and greetings from Annapolis. I'm assuming it's a beautiful day there. This is a great time of year. I grew up, I, I spent a lot of time in my professional career down in the Annapolis area, and I love it. It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> That's it. One word. That's great. Well, we're going to jump right in here. We, we, these uh, conversations with Canisius, Tom, we usually just get a quick snapshot of sort of what you've been up to since your time at Canisius High School, a little bit about your career, and you've had some really exciting uh, things going on in your life. And we talk a little bit about the future and advice you'd have for any of the young crusaders here at Canisius High School who are, you know, heading off to college or heading out into the real world. So let's rewind back to 19. 92 or three when you started at Canisius High School. What brought you to Canisius? Well, I got to think back. Nin 1992 is a long time ago. <laughs> um, you know, I come from a, a family who um, has attended, you know, Catholic education in Buffalo um, really for, for many generations. So I think that's what got me first interested in going to Canisius High School. I went to uh, St. Stephen's, which is a Catholic school on Grand Island, New York, uh, from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade. Um, my father uh, and my grandfather went to St. Joe's. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I, my uncle went to Canisius. So I looked at both schools uh, when making the, that top decision. And uh, really it was the shadowing process that did it for me. Um, just, you know, I don't remember who I shadowed with as a long time ago. But just walking around the, the halls of Canisius um, and just seeing the, you know, the pursuit of excellence everywhere, it really encouraged me and inspired me, um, you know, as a young, impressionable uh, eighth grader. And, uh, and the, the, the teachers, too, just the, the Jesuits and then the other, um, the other teachers, you know, they took an interest in me. You know, they, they talked to me. They were enthusiastic and confident and very competent. And I could see that as an eighth grader, you know, it just made it an immediate impression. Uh, impression on me. So I think that's why I decided to, uh, to go to Canisius High School and, you know, I haven't looked, uh, looked back since. In your four years there, Tom, like who were some of your, you know, influential teachers and what kind of activities and clubs were you involved in? Okay, well, I'll start with the, the teachers. I mean, geez, there are so many to go through, but I'll just, uh, two of them are still there, so I'll just emphasize those or highlight them. Uh, but Ms. Turpak Andres was my, uh, my religion teacher, my homeroom teacher. Uh, she was tough. <laughs> she was, you know, she was very disciplined, um, but she, I learned a lot from her, and she was very fair, um, and I've tried to apply some of those lessons uh, throughout my career, and in, in the field I'm in, you know, discipline is very important. Um, being tough but fair is also very important, so I, I learned that from her. Uh, the other, Father San Samino is the other one. You know, he's there's not a day that goes by that I don't remember some of the conversations we had about integrity and honor um, and, and how important that was just not to, uh, you know, not, not to the Jesuits, but really to, um, to everything that we do in life and, and how I always need to be thinking about that. And especially after uh, I made the decision to attend the Naval Academy, we had even more conversations um, and I quickly, uh, I quickly came up on the governor there and, and, and really did some introspection. And, and that's helped me throughout my career because there's nothing more important to what we do on a submarine than, uh, than honor and integrity. It's, it's the foundation of trust, which we just have to have in one another uh, when we're submerged you know, at, at deep depths, um, operating all around the world. And ac academically, what were your, your interests at, at Canisius High School? Uh, I was a, mostly math and science um, at Canisius High School. I mean, I, the one thing I love about Canisius is the liberal, liberal arts education. Um, I think that's really helped me through my career because I work with a lot of, um, a lot of engineers <laughs> and uh, super smart. But I think that the, the Jesuit education brought, brings a lot of balance to us. Um, 
no matter what you want to do, you know, whether you want to pursue a STEM type career or you want to, um, you know, or you want to be a teacher, uh, we really balance that education out and you're prepared, I think, very well to do, to succeed in life because you don't only have uh, skills honed in in one area, you can really, um, you can com you communicate well, uh, you know how to lead, you know how to listen, all skills that are important. Um, and you just have that foundation uh, for, su the, for success. Uh, to answer your other question about other things that interested me, um, you know, I played, uh, I played football. I was only about 120 pounds soaking wet though back then. Uh, and then I ended up breaking my arm in three spots. So I, I started rowing crew. My dad rowed at St. Joe's. Uh, and I, I loved it. Again, I never looked back. I uh, rode um, all the way through my time at, at Canisius. Uh, then I rode at the Naval Academy. Um, I'm nowhere near as good as the others that were on my team at the time, uh, or nowhere near as good as everyone else at Navy or my brothers. Uh, but I loved it, and I learned a lot from um, from rowing, uh, and, and that balance of you know, rowing is a tough. It's a tough sport physically, but it's it takes a, a huge commitment. So. I learned how to balance that with academics, um, with my personal life and my professional life. And that's, uh, you know, that's, that's not an easy thing to do. And it's definitely a life skill. And so when you were at Naval Academy, Tom, you, you decided to pursue sort of a career in, in submarines, nuclear submarines, nuclear propulsion. Talk a little bit about sort of your career and the different boats you've served on and your time, you know, as a, as a submarine officer. And, how maybe some of your experiences at Canisius helped get you through those times? Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's just an awesome question. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be quick with my, my duty history, as we call it, <laughs> so we can get into this more, uh, you know, some deeper topics. But um, after I graduated from the Canisius High School, I went right to the Naval Academy. I was very blessed uh, to have an appointment to the Naval Academy in Annapolis. Uh, I graduated in uh, the year 2000. Uh, following that, um, I had a you know, little time off here uh, before I went um, into the fleet after I was commissioned. I went to nuclear uh, power school and training, um, which is about a year of training total, where the first six months is spent in a classroom where you learn about uh, you know, physics and math, um, thermodynamics, uh, other uh, electrical engineering, things that directly apply to uh, to nuclear, the nu operating a nuclear propulsion plant. Um, and then the next six months I spent on an actual plant uh, up in Boston Spa, New York, so right outside Saratoga Springs, uh, where I, I learned to actually um, operate a nuclear propulsion plant, both to lead and manage sailors um, who operate the plant and do the things that they do. So I kind of understand, you know, what it's, what their job better um, and can make better decisions. Um, so the first six months was in Charleston, South Carolina, the second, second six months in uh, Boston Spa, New York. Uh, then I went up to Groton, Connecticut. So I'm already on three moves now, <laughs> just <laughs> after uh, graduating. Um, up to Groton, Connecticut for three months for submarine training, basic submarine training, where we, we, we don't focus as much uh, on the engine room and the propulsion plant, but we learn about submarine tactics. Um, buoyancy, you know, how a submarine can, can submerge and hopefully surface every time it goes down. So it's a one for one there. Um, we come home safely. Uh, learn how to drive the submarine on the surface um, and submerged. Um, so, and, and about all the, uh, the other systems that make the submarine work, uh, like sonar and fire control, torpedoes, tomahawk missiles, stuff like that. Uh, so that was a, that's about a year. It takes me about a year and a half out of college. So I'm only about 20, uh, probably about 23 years old. Um, in April of 2002, I reported to my first submarine. I was on USS Louisiana down in Kings Bay, Georgia, which is just um, just north of Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, Louisiana is uh, an SSBN, a ballistic missile submarine, so she's capable of carrying uh, 24 nuclear-tipped uh, missiles. Uh, I spent three years uh, on uh, Louisiana down there. Um, after I left, she changed home port. She's now out in uh, Bremerton, Washington, uh, the state of Washington in the Pacific. Uh, so about three years there, I learned a ton. Um, I qualified to earn my dolphins, which um, you've probably seen Top Gun, and you know you see everybody wearing their wings. Well, right, uh, right on my chest here, these are 
these are my dolphins and um you know it took a lot to earn those uh and it, it, it means a lot not just to me but it means you know a lot to every sailor around us on the submarines uh, when you finally earn those because it's a team effort to, to earn them which means i'm submarine qualified so after i left uh louisiana i went to i moved to fort balvor or to i moved to alexandria virginia i worked at fort balvor at a joint defense agency again just in northern virginia i uh, spent about two years there uh, working uh, with our nuclear uh, weapons um, all the new maintaining the nuclear weapons uh, database um, which tracks you know all the components involved with nuclear weapons around the world that the united states maintains uh, following that, I went back to submarine department head school. Oh, I also got married during that time, so <laughs> uh, that was great. That was awesome. <laughs> um, and after that, I moved up to uh, back to Connecticut. Uh, I went uh, submarine department head school is about six months long. It's your your the second um, your second sea tour as we call it. So the second part of your at sea journey as a submariner. Um, there are three department head jobs, the uh, navigator and operations officer, the weapons officer, and the engineer. So I was uh, very lucky to be assigned as a navigator uh, and operations officer on a fast attack submarine uh, during that time. So I finished department head school, then I moved down to Norfolk, Virginia. You're probably losing track of all the moves. I, I know I have, and it just keeps going. Um, with my wife, Melissa. Um, I was on uh, USS Boise, which is a Los Angeles class fast attack submarine for uh, almost four years, just under four years. Uh, deployed twice on her, so two extended deployments on Boise to the North Atlantic uh, against, uh, against the Russians. Um, an extended deployment is about six to seven months uh, on a submarine, so we're constantly um, operating at sea and doing maintenance and working towards uh, an ultimate deployment where we execute uh, missions and we're prepared for combat if need be. So that's how I spent the next four years of my life. Uh, following that, uh, I went to what's called a shore duty assignment. So you'll kind of notice this trend of sea, uh, a sea duty assignment on a submarine and then a shore duty assignment. Uh, my next shore duty assignment was working at Commander Submarine Force Headquarters in Norfolk. So no move there, thank goodness. Um, and I was the Admiral's aide for Admiral, uh, Admiral John Richardson, who was our CNO, our Chief of Naval Operations for the last, um, oh geez, about three or four years. Uh, he's, he's, he retired last year, um, and I, I learned a ton from him. It was probably one of the hardest jobs I've ever done, um, but I, I learned a lot from him, and I'll never forget that time uh, serving as his aide. So following, uh, Melissa and I had our first daughter during that time. Um, uh, Linda, she's nine years old now. Wow. So that was, uh, that was an, again, something, a huge event in our lives that I had to balance and manage, uh, you know, with to being, learning to be a new dad um, with, you know, trying to manage my manager with being an admiral's aide, which is tough. So uh, following that, we moved out to Hawaii. Uh, we were in Hawaii for about just over two years where I was the executive officer on a Los, no, another Los Angeles class fast attack submarine USS Olympia. Uh, when I was out there, we deployed uh, extended deployments to the Western Pacific. So operated um, the, the Pacific Ocean, the Philippine Sea, the South China Sea, the East China Sea. Uh, it is, I call it the Wild West because it is a busy area out there. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, merchant traffic and fishing traffic. It makes it really tough to operate as a submarine uh, in those areas when you can't see anybody and you're just listening with sonar when you're down there. Um, I got the the opportunity to pull into some great ports, uh, Korea, Japan, um, Guam, uh, and really learned a lot about their cultures and loved it. Um, when we finished our time in uh, Hawaii, we moved back to Norfolk, Virginia where I worked as part of a staff for U.S. Fleet Forces Command. So again, I was at sea, now I'm back to shore again. Uh, it was about, I worked there for about a year and a half. Uh, following that, uh, I went through the submarine uh, command course, which is a, a crucible event we have to go through before we take command, where uh, there are uh, three submarine officers who evaluate you and they help mentor and train you and evaluate you and certify that you're ready to take command of a submarine. Uh, when that was finished, uh, we moved up to Groton, Connecticut, and I had command, or I was the captain, as we call it, uh, of USS Minnesota. That's a Virginia-class fast attack submarine. 
Uh, I was uh, in command for just under three years. Uh, loved every minute of it. Uh, when we uh, we finished last uh, last September, finished our time there. Uh, I moved uh, directly from Connecticut to Annapolis, Maryland, uh, where I am now, working as a, a battalion officer. And what that means, you know, the the Naval Academy is divided up similar to Canisius, you know, where you have houses. We have um, companies and battalions. Um, each company is made up of about 150 midshipmen from freshmen to senior seniors um, who all live, kind of live together, work together. That's our, that's our, our core units is a company. So I have five companies that work for me. I'm in charge of 750 uh, two midshipmen right now. I'm also in charge of all the nuclear accessions here. So working with encouraging, engaging and encouraging uh, midshipmen to consider uh, nuclear service. So working as a submarine officer or a surface nuclear trained officer who would work on an aircraft carrier. Um, and then working, helping them get through the interview process to be a nuclear trained um, officer, which involves um, being interviewed by engineers up at the Naval Reactors, which is the, the headquarters for the Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program in DC. Uh, and then completing the interview with the Admiral uh, himself. You, you may have heard rumors, if you know anything about Navy nuclear power, about Admiral Rickover and all the horror stories and um, just, just a trial and tribulation of, of individuals, including Jimmy Carter, who were interviewed by uh, Admiral Rickover. And it's, it's not a, uh, it's a nerve wracking experience sure. uh, to go through that process, but that's just how important it is to, to maintain high standards and pick the right people for this program. So, um, and that, yeah, that brings me here to today. Uh, I've also, one thing I, I didn't mention, uh, I did a, go to grad school um, on my own while I was working in Washington, D.C. on my first uh, shore duty assignment. So I have a master's in engineering management from Catholic University, uh, which uh, at the time I didn't know if I wanted to stay in the Navy for a career. Uh, so I, um, I funded that on my own and, and just kind of, I worked full time and then went, um, attended classes when I could to get that degree. Um, and again, that kind of brings me to today. That's amazing. Like that's a lot of responsibility and a lot of, a lot of pressure, frankly. And so is there anything, any, any, maybe any lessons you learned at Canisius? You mentioned some earlier, you know, honor and integrity and some of your conversations with Father C, but any other, any other things you could pull from your Canisius, you know, time at Canisius that helped you get through this incredibly rigorous and, and pressure filled career? Yeah, that, uh, so many things, you know, it's hard to, uh, to go through all of them. I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll hit a couple. Uh, leading uh, young women in today's military is number one. I mean, Canisius, you know, gave me the opportunity. I, I, I was probably a, a shy, more introverted young man when I started at Canisius. And I think Canisius thrust me in the, in the positions, uh, and the, the Jesuits specifically, you know, when they they called me out uh, in class. They recognized who I was, and they took me out of my comfort zone. And they forced me to um, to be confident um, and to communicate with um, with other with my peers and to communicate with those above me and below me. Uh, and that's those are skills that I, I've really helped me in, in my career. Um, Canisius has taught me to hold myself and others accountable, which in the Navy. Uh, in the, in the military service and especially submarines, that is a that is a skill that not everybody has, surprisingly enough. Um, and it's it's really really important again because what what we do on a submarine is high risk, high stakes. You have to be able to d maintain high standards, hold others accountable, to maintain good order and discipline um, it, within our team, um, and you know so that you're ready to fight and win and survive in combat. Um, we talked about integrity and honor, and I just can't stress enough how important important those values are to um, to being an effective leader uh, in our military and on a submarine specifically. Uh, you know, and I've, I'm not perfect. I'm like everybody else. You know, I've learned some hard lessons uh, when I was younger, but I'm glad I did when I was younger because uh, I think I can communicate more effectively with those young men and women who work for me. Um, and really it's, you know, it's part of our day-to-day, -day, I really strive to make it part of our day-to-day -day conversation. And, you know, if you've ever seen the movie Gladiator, um, 
you know, when Russell Crowe picks up dirt and says strength and honor before he goes in the battle, that's what integrity is to, is to me and is to us uh, in the submarine force. Um, I, I think resiliency under stress, um, I talked about the, the Jesuits, you know, being hard nosed with me. Um, they taught me, they, I built a lot of resiliency uh, at Canisius High School, which, you know, I then translated well into the Naval Academy. Uh, the Naval Academy really wasn't that difficult for me because, um, you know, I, the discipline I learned at Canisius was, you know, just as much or more than I got here. So I was already used to kind of, you know, being under the gun, being under stress, um, learning how to, you know, I knew how to survive um, and, and to be resilient. And I think uh, most importantly, I learned to, uh, I've heard the Buffalo Bills coach say this, and, you know, I, I follow the Bills like, uh, like anybody, you know, stay humble and hungry. You know, I, that mantra is uh, something I've always followed my whole life. And, you know, you can't, you can't put, um, I can't put a number on how important humility is to what we do uh, in the military and being willing to, uh, to learn, learn, learn from others, learn from history, um, to recognize that none of us are perfect and that we can always uh, learn and improve um, ultimately in that pursuit of excellence. You know, I think Vince Lombardi, he, he has a quote, I won't give, you know, I can't give him justice. Or, you know, <laughs> I won't do justice to his quote, but he says something like, you know, we're going to strive uh, for perfection every single day. And even though I know we won't meet it, you know, we'll reach excellence on the way. And I think that that's something uh, that I learned at Canisius and, and, and I followed that, um, that same philosophy through my time uh, in the Navy. And it's really helped my team. Um, I think me by me staying humble, being human, being willing to learn from them that they were willing to learn from me and we were successful as a team. Uh, that's, uh, does that answer your question, Andy? Or? Oh my gosh, does that answer my question? Not only does it answer that question, but you know, one of the things I was going to pivot to was some advice for young kids. And you just really, I mean, all of those things, I think really is what, you know, we're, uh, I'm a father as well. And the, the, those lessons are all lessons, whether you're in the Naval Academy or you're working in the advancement office at Canisius High School, those are lessons that we're constantly trying to impart onto our children you know, all of those things, honor and integrity and being humble. Um, it, it, it's just really great to hear you talk like that. And, and I know a lot of that comes from, you know, Canisius High School, which prepares us not only academically and physically, you know, and through its great athletic programs and art programs, you know, mentally. And, but there's another part to our education, and that's sort of the Ignatian formation piece. And I was just wondering, you know, how do you, how is that present in your life today? Or is it present in your life today? I guess I could say, you know, faith in God and, and uh, this ethos of being a man and a woman for and with others is a big part of what Canisius is about. And so how do you carry that with you in your everyday life in the Naval, in the Naval Academy, at the, at the Naval Academy? Yeah, no, I, I thought a lot about that. And I always, I'm always thinking about that. And, um, you know, being uh, our ethos of being a man, um, or a woman for others. I mean, it's being a member of the mili today's military, and there's nothing more important than, you know, certainly, I'm sure you've heard of servant leadership. Sure. Uh, and, and I think that the, the, the skill, what we learn at Kanisha is that foundation of, of being a man for others um, was really easy. It, it really helped me um, with my serve during my time, um, not only in command, but just in all the different jobs. Uh, that I've uh, had the opportunity to serve in uh, during my time in the military. Uh, I think Kanish just really, what it instilled in me is to, you know, maintain a really self-reflective self lifestyle, I guess, um, is the best way to put it, where, you know, I'm always, always thinking, you know, how are my actions, um, how do my actions align with my faith? How do my decisions uh, that I make on a day-to-day -day basis uh, not only affect the men and women that, that I um, am blessed to lead and serve with, uh, but how, do, how does it align with my faith? How does, um, how does it align with, you know, my purpose and, and what I'm trying, you know, who I am as a person and what I'm trying to accomplish? So, you know, everything we do in the, in the Navy is, is in service, uh, if we do it right, is in service, you know, to the amazing men and women that we lead every single day. Um, because we, again, we're, you know, we are, 
every, you know, all of your, all of our parents, you know, and our families entrust um, these men and women to us. And it's a huge responsibility. So I take, uh, I take that very seriously. Um, I take my service to them very, very seriously. And, um, and I take my faith very seriously. And they all kind of always trying to think through how do these align? Um, it's, uh, it's, a difficult, <laughs> it's a difficult task sometimes, um, but I'm always doing it. I'm always trying to do my best. That's great. To, to uh, take that into account. That's great. I think that's it. I mean, that's all we can do is right. Do our best. That's another, that's, but that's also extremely Ignatian, you know, like you're just doing the best you can in the moment that you're in. And so, especially when you have all your responsibilities with family and career and country, but uh, let's, you know, we've talked a lot about the past and we reflected on your incredible journey. What about the future? What is, what, what are some of your goals? What are some of your things you're looking forward to over the next several years and then into the future? You know, it's uh, I kind of break it into personal and professional um, sure. goals. I, number one, you know, my number one goal is, is you know, I'm married and I have two young daughters. Uh, one's in kindergarten and one is in uh, third grade. So my number one goal is to be present. <laughs> That's a, uh, it's really important to me. I've been, I've been gone a lot in my career, uh, both physically um, and, and sometimes even when I home, when I'm home mentally, just based on the immense pressure and responsibilities uh, that I've had. Um, so I, I really want to continue to, to, to learn and grow as a husband um, and a father uh, and as a citizen, you know, of our, of our nation, which is just super important, um, not only in the past, but especially today. Uh, I think professionally, um, I'm a little bit undecided right now with where I want to go. You know, having command of a submarine is it was, it, like, like I said, an immense responsibility um, and I'm very humbled to have, have had that opportunity, and I loved every minute of it. Minute of it. And now I'm kind of uh, still decompressing, and, and I miss it. I'm the men and women I serve with on my summer. They were my family, you know, my second family. Um, I truly do miss them, and, um, and I, I miss being part of such a, just a close knit team and family. Um, and that's that's tough. That's a tough transition for me. So. Right now, professionally, uh, you know, I have a lot of options. Um, I think right now I want to continue to serve our, you know, our sailors, um, our submarine force in our nation uh, as a submarine major commander, which is the next professional step for me in the submarine force. Uh, submarine major commander, uh, there are different types of jobs you could fill. Um, the job that I'm very interested in is being a submarine commodore, which um, a, a commodore will have instead of just uh, you know being in charge of a submarine and going out and operating and deploying with that submarine now you're in charge of anywhere from five to ten submarines typically uh, where you know you have five to ten commanding officers and crews who work for you and it's a great opportunity to give back you know to mentor uh, commanding officers and, and to help crews um, be at their best so that again if push comes to shove you know we can fight win and survive in combat um after that you know i take each day at a time you know if 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 things continue to go well you know i potentially could serve further um again if i'm blessed with uh being selected and the opportunity to lead as an admiral um i don't i don't know if that's what we want what we want to do uh yet because it would just be a lot more moves and, and very tough personally sure uh but you know that's still uh still on the table if again if i'm lucky enough and blessed to have that opportunity um also, uh, considering transitioning to the private sector, um, where I can continue to uh, support our military, maybe in a different capacity. As a submarine officer, you know we have a lot of um, we get unbelievable. We have an unbelievable balance of training, skill, leadership, experience, education uh, that other members of the military don't necessarily have, and we're highly sought after uh, in the private sector for different leadership jobs in uh, technical um, organizations. Sure. So that's something I might, be, uh, you know, I might pursue and be interested in, you know, kind of starting over. It's hard to start over, you know. Um, I'm 43, you know, it'd be, it would be hard to go back and start over, but I'm willing to do it. Um, and I'm ready and willing to do it. So. Well, it sounds, so those are just things that we're considering. And it sounds like you have a tremendous amount of options. and You've created a lot of optionality for yourself with all of your hard work and dedication and service and I just want to thank you for spending the time with me today. Just a few 
you know, minutes telling us a little bit about your journey and, and what you've been up to. I want to thank you for your service and wish you the best of luck. And uh, I hope we stay in touch and we uh, maybe in a few years can do this again and get an update on how, you're, on how things are going for you, Tom. That's awesome. Thanks, Andy. And again, I, I just want to say I'm humbled uh, to even be asked to, uh, to speak to everybody today. I mean, I've looked at some of the other videos uh, posted on the Canisius website and wow, just some really just amazing uh, and accomplished men. And I, I'm very humbled to even be uh, considered for this. So thank you very much for having me. And I look forward to uh, getting back home soon and walking the halls because I think the Canisius High School physically has changed a fair amount since I've last been there. Um, and I, you know, I look forward to, uh, to watching a football game and, and beating St. Joe's when I can. Well, you're, Thank you very much. you're as amazing and as accomplished as anybody else I've interviewed. Don't forget that, Tom. Appreciate everything and uh, look forward to staying in touch. Be well, my friend. Okay, thanks, Andy. See you.